objections. To, if you want now, to introduce yourself, provide us some information about where you come from, what is your affiliation. Sorry, I missed something. So, regarding the flow of the webinar, uh, as you saw from the agenda items, there will be after there are dedicated sections to different topics, and after each section, we have a Q and A session. Uh, if you can raise your hand if you want, you can raise your hand by clicking on the participants and then click raise hand next to your name and you can also raise and lower your hand uh, from the reactions menu. Uh, before proceeding with the core of the webinar, uh, being here you probably know what is the SEMIC action, but if you don't know, let me give you a few details. So, the same action is focusing on semantic interoperability among the EU member states. So, what SEMIC is doing is trying to facilitate the share and reuse of semantic assets and uh, the experience of the member states and providing tools to facilitate agreements in key areas of interoperability. SEMIC is also trying to identify opportunities for alignment on semantic definitions, metadata, reference data sources, um, with special focus on the identification and definition of core concepts and vocabularies. Also, uh, SEMIC uh, is trying to raise awareness on the importance of data and metadata management. So, now I will give the floor to my colleague Bert, who is going to guide you through. Yeah, I do the warm up the, of the context of uh, linked data event streams before we deep dive uh, with Peter into the, the real specification. Um, and okay, if you uh, can give me the sharing, it's easier. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the goal of, of, of the perspective that we start from this action is from base registries. Um, and so if you're working on a base registry, you build a system that is going to share uh, information to the other uh, applications and information systems in uh, government. And in that uh, in uh, work, one of the key cons uh, considerations you make is typically what is the data API I want to build? What is how I'm going to share it? What is how I'm going to structure my API? And in that, a key element is, of course, how the data itself, the entities that I'm sharing, uh, how they are represented, what is the identity uh, identifier I'm going to use, and what is then this life cycle of this uh, entity, uh, and this, these objects, how do I expose that to the API? And this is always a question and everybody goes in every base registry to this uh, activity to find out what is kind of the best suited uh, API that could fit these uh, objectives. If we go then a bit deeper on this challenge, uh, then the question that is often raised in another formulated is, so how do I get the users of a base registry up to date data? How, can, how they get aware of the changes because a base registry is not a static thing. It is actually evolving and it has uh, new data that comes in and how this information is then shared. And so that you as well have access uh, the, as user to the historic data and the current data and how these things are interrelated. And so this is kind of the challenge that you face uh, for building up the right API. And if you look for an answer, then you, if you look uh, today, they're saying, okay, we're going to connect our base registry and the user to a stream so that the data and the data changes can be going from the base registry to the user. And this is where linked data event streams come into the picture as a more uh, standardizing, a more abstract way to look to it, to this challenge of streaming, agnostic to the physical data representation. So it looks to what the streaming is and takes the semantics behind the streaming uh, in the linked data context. And that allows us to do uh, a lot of things. 
one of these abstraction things is that it is uh, not going directly to the end user application, but builds in this uh, notion uh, of linked data event streams, the layering slowly towards uh, the end user interaction uh, with the data. And one of the elements is there is that you go from the data to a reusable index, an abstract notion on which you can build query interfaces that meet uh, the, the best uh, uh, aspects for your um, end application. And so by doing so, you, you, you can focus on things on the core while knowing that you can, uh, in the end, serve your uh, end application, the end users, in an uh, appropriate way, but still keeping this abstraction available. And as such, then this allows us, and this is the, the, the broad context, that each actor in, in the chain of exchanging data, so from the data owner to the data publisher, the, the one that is preparing uh, the data uh, for the services and, and so on, and the intermediaries and, and the data users, that they can play their role and have full power to do their activity. Uh, while everybody is, is, is kind of uh, having the best uh, let's say efforts and can focus their efforts. So the data owner can focus on the changing, saying, ensuring that the changes come in. The publisher has a minimal API to, to work upon. The intermediaries can compose, compose these uh, uh, minimal APIs to transform the data. The services can say, okay, what is then the best service based on these uh, aggregations to provide up-to-date or historic uh, views um, to the data users, and then the data users can explore it in a scalable way. So given this as introduction, I hope that uh, you have some broad setting of where, from base registries, why linked data event streams is kind of a good fit. And in order that, and then I give the words to Peter, so we will bring us um, to a more in-depth overview of what is the specification about um, so that we have a good discussion and uh, and that you can capture this knowledge. All right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Bert. Um, first and foremost, uh, uh, we already have a couple of uh, uh, of uh, links on, or webinars recorded that that introduced the the LDAS spec from from a technical perspective, from a management perspective. Uh, over here, we have a new way of uh, of, of introducing it. And that's uh, uh, from the way. And, and please uh, give me the next slide. Uh, I don't know. Is, uh, Arna, are you uh, are you switching the slides or, um, or maybe Bert? Yeah. So okay. 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 So I'll yes. Do. Okay. So uh, linked data event streams is a combination of two ideas: uh, linked data and event sourcing. And um, and what I want to do for this audience is to first dive deeper into linked data and. Uh, uh, linked data for me always has been uh, uh, has been uh, next slide please um, is, is has been the just the, the the most important aspects of linked data is, is these two ideas uh, you will we will use global identifiers URIs web addresses in order to identify things for example if you want to point to the European Union there's a, a, the, the, a there's a URI for that and uh, there are many URIs that, uh, that that get published and of course we will use triple statements uh, about these things I think that's that's nothing new next slide uh, and the powerful idea behind that is that these triples can be encoded in any kind of serialization and and this is something not to be underestimated is that that we Actually, the first and foremost thing that we do is to bring syntactic interoperability uh, across the web. Like you can use any kind of format uh, as long as there is a, a linked data uh, a way of knowing what the triples are and how to, 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 to get to the global identifiers, then you actually uh, can start discussing the uh, semantic interoperability. All this creates the linked open data cloud. And I know, I know, this is preaching to the choir, but I really don't want to forget about how powerful this idea is, getting a lot of freedom to, uh, to, to, to people who implement this into their own system. And I think that's also the powerful idea behind linked data is that 
whether you're doing a relational database in the back, whether you're doing uh, a, a big data cluster of, of, of something in the back, whether you're doing a NoSQL document store, whatever, you always can put that layer on top of HTTP that will bring uh, that will make sure that uh, you have linked data that becomes interoperable uh, uh, across uh, across the web. And this is what we want to bring to event sourcing. Uh, event sourcing for me, this is the the answer to hope APIs get created because uh, an API for me is a view on data that is somehow managed in the in in the back. It's uh, it's somehow someone will write maybe multiple uh, uh, actors will, will will write to a uh, to a kind of queue whether that queue is materialized or not uh, i mean uh, somehow there will be writes uh, uh, getting getting into the system uh, which may denote a new thing being created a new version of a thing being created uh, uh, things like that then there's some kind of pipeline that will that will uh, that will move it towards uh, filter transform uh, uh, maybe towards the needs of a, of an applica specific application profile a schema uh, a shape uh, uh, to then uh, to then publish a certain view that can be just one document but it can also be an entire service that that uh, that gets created like uh, like uh, Bert already mentioned it can be an OGC uh, WFS uh, uh, kind of service it can be a Sparkle endpoint uh, but it can also be uh, other things so this event sourcing idea this is what we want to get to the uh, to the web so what does LDAS do in this uh, in this picture well I think we need to make sure that uh, all of this can be decentralized over HTTP if we if we have that then we can also have like an open data approach to any of these things and then we can give power uh, to anyone to set up a derived view on top of uh, an, in, an initial base registry or uh, initial other linked uh, linked data set so um, linked data event streaming will make sure that data can flow uh, between servers and that uh, just a view of a certain data set uh, can be uh, can be created in in, in that sense a very concrete example because you may say ah oh, but an LDAS that must be very complex to set up then well we really really try to keep it as simple as possible an event stream you could see you could say that as a specialization of a DCAT data set and well we actually see that as a, a, a very specific DCAT data set uh, but uh, what will happen is that it's a collection of items that will uh, that will get updates uh, uh, over time with LDAS, we will uh, we will also say that every item in the collection is immutable. So in that sense, an LDAS event stream extends the idea of uh, of that. And if we talk about a linked data event stream, we need to explicitly talk about things in their time context and as part of a well-defined collection of items ma maintained by an organization. Um, so then what we what we can do is uh, uh is we can set up uh we can start uh um, saying that in one page for example we can already make an LDAS by just saying look we have a collection that's uh, that's um, uh, that's an event stream and that collection contains members and for example that uh, collection contains uh, uh street name one uh street name one over here first got one label uh, station road but then apparently it became a square so 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 later on it should get to get the name uh, square so that fact also gets added of course this is a problem over here because uh, uh, uh the way we designed it over here the street name one uh, object is not immutable and this is what we mean with immutability we want to see the things in their time context so we actually need to make a version of a street name to then say that street name version was created at a certain moment and later on what uh, uh, is being uh, is being overwritten or or has a new version later on that is then a street name one version two and that's on the that's on the next slide that we will see that uh, is that in this sense uh, if you say that street name one version one is a version of uh, uh, street name one uh, it has been created but at least we have disambiguated uh, uh, these these things and we can still perfectly now process it in in a certain view when we see uh, uh street name one version two we based on the dc terms created we can make sure that uh ah okay this is the latest version so we will get that one in our view that needs to show the latest version of that um good 
on top of that, you can indicate a lot of metadata on top of the uh, event stream. So, uh, so you can annotate the, the, the event stream with uh, a timestamp path, for example, meaning that, hey, that's the, that's the, um, uh, that's the predicates that we will use, or that's the property that we will use in the members to indicate which one precedes another one. Uh, a version of path means that uh, you don't have to set it, but if you set it, you clearly indicate that uh, we work version based. So, uh, so you can just overwrite the full uh, the full member each time you're processing it uh, in, in in your system. And you can also annotate it with, for example, a shape saying every uh, all of my members will adhere to this uh, to this shackle shape, uh, uh, for example. Um, the the um, the, the, the cool idea about about this uh, this bit of turtle of this bit of linked data these bit of triples is uh, you can use any serialization to publish it you can just publish one file and then later on that, uh, later on update that file so in that sense we believe that LDES is not that complex it's just a matter of slightly remodeling your data to have immutable events and having a collection of uh, of uh, of immutable events in that sense the LDES vocabulary itself. So, so I think LDES is two things. It's a vocabulary and it's a specification. The vocabulary on the one hand just introduces a couple of terms. Uh, it, uh, it develops, uh, it, it uh, uh, introduces the term event stream, which is an ever-growing collection of immutable members. It contains uh, the, the, the term event source, which is a view on top of an event stream that can be used to keep other views in sync. Uh, it defines a retention policy because you don't always have to keep on any server all the history. So you can define on a view, you can define that some data will not be kept indefinitely. Um, you can define snapshots, which means that, ah, okay, uh, uh, there's a lot of history now, but we will just create a snapshot that can be used to uh, quickly uh, catch up and then sync with, with the event stream again uh, uh, later on. And we also introduce the term version materialization, which is actually if you have a versioned uh, data source with a version of path, that will actually turn around the triple so that we will say that we will not talk about street name version one anymore, but that we'll just talk about street name one uh, uh, again. So that uh, so that then the the context of time is uh, uh, gone again. Yeah. Next uh, next slide. The LDAS specification then, uh, which is the the, the respec uh, style uh, uh, specification that you've seen at w 3 idorg slash LDAS slash specification. Um, uh, that one explains what an LDAS server may publish. In that sense that we keep it as easy and versatile as possible. We want to be compatible with related specs with similar goals. Uh, and if something is not yet supported, like if there, there, there exists a spec that, uh, that, uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is also, that has the same ideas, I also want to provide the compatibilities there so that if we create an LDES client uh, uh, in the end, that, uh, that the LDES client is, uh, uh, can process uh, event stream-like uh, uh, data sets as well in the, in, in the long term. Uh, the spec also uh, explains what an LDES client must support. In that sense, uh, uh, we will be uh, focusing on keeping replicated views in sync and using the tree specification for uh, guiding uh, link traversal there. So the so the LDES uh, specification is quite short, I think, but a lot of things are really uh, adopted from the from the tree specification, which is uh, um, uh, which is uh, now in a W3C uh, community group uh, that, uh, that uh, being further discussed. Uh, tree hypermedia specification allows you in short to uh, to to also uh, paginate uh, because I said uh, you can put that event stream in one page. Well, what if that page becomes too big? What if it contains way too much uh, data at that point? Well, then you can start paginating it. Uh, well, I say paginating. Well, tree allows you to not only paginate it in a one-dimensional next, next, next order, but to really describe what the the link is to the to the to the next page. In that sense, the next page uh, you can have multiple next page links, but with different meaning, and that way you get like a tree search uh, a search tree uh, a structure that you can use. Um, this is how the, the, the tree specification is, uh, uh, is, is, is summarized. So you, you define your collection, which is then, uh, which also is uh, uh, a superclass of the LDAS event stream. You can have multiple pages, which are called tree nodes, uh, and you can uh, browse through that through the, the, the tree relations. Yeah. Next uh, slide. 
Um, and uh, just uh, uh, now recently, we've uh, uh, we've uh, got ah, that should have been an animated GIF. Too bad that uh, that uh, that doesn't work. Please uh, go and go and check the uh, uh, the uh, the link uh, there, the, the URI explorer.averkreuze.be. Uh, we started uh, creating like a, a quick explorer. So if you have a linked data event stream, just uh, uh, just uh, enter it uh, in there, and you will quickly be able to see all the members with uh, with uh, as as easy as possible. And you will also be able to see all the relations uh, from that, so you know how to uh, how to explore the, the the linked data event stream in that sense. Yeah. Uh, and as I already said uh, as well, then uh, so in, in in this uh, group we will keep organizing uh, uh, webinars and uh, with 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 CEMEC. We will move towards uh, uh, this vocabulary and spec on LDAS level. We will keep it uh, uh, to, to be discussed over here and on the on the GitHub uh, of CEMEC. But LDAS relies on three, and three is a W3C community group uh, now. We just started up. There are no emails yet on the on the mailing list, but that will soon change because we will need to elect a chair there and then uh, be sure to evolve the, the specification over there as well. A lot of concerns that are in the LDAS spec can be generalized to not to just collections and not Im uh, collections of immutable items. That's why we will also sometimes move certain discussions towards the W3C community group instead of uh, having them in the, the LDAS group. And uh, a quick shout out to the to the uh, Flanders Smart Data Space. Uh, they have just launched a portal on uh, linked data event streams. Being uh, it is in Dutch though, but it's a really insightful uh, uh, portal that uh, that that you can check that uh, uh, that contains use cases, but also contains uh, a technical uh, 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 documentation on a lot of uh, uh, building blocks that they have been uh, creating. That's it from uh, my part. Thanks a lot, Peter. Um, I think this is an excellent moment to for everyone to ask if there are any questions. A lot of theory has been given. Um, so is there anyone with a question? Just please raise your virtual hand and we will give you the floor. Yes, Matthias, can you please repeat your question in the group? Uh, hello. Uh, so there's the provenance ontology which allows you to define kind of the, um, how entities evolve over time with relations to agents. Um, it's already a V3C recommendation. Uh, so could you say anything about if you have considered uh, Prop O, if that is one of the building blocks or yeah, anything? Uh, yes, certainly. So, uh, so Bravo is uh, is uh, for me something that we just must uh, also uh, adopt in this uh, this ecosystem. In that sense, um, uh, like if you have an LDAS and then you have an intermediary that processes that LDAS and then uh, does uh, publishes another LDAS on top of that, it's fundamental that we also describe using Provo that that uh, has been uh, gone through uh, through a certain uh, uh, activity and that that uh, that the new thing has been uh, has been created from that and that we describe that with uh, uh, using um, uh, using Provo. In that sense, we've also already have done work on that. Uh, so uh, at 3.linkdatafragments.org, you will be able uh, to find some, uh, even a paper about it. And that's uh, also, and, and we also have a draft specification of that. I will quickly put the link of the draft specification on that, that uses Provo um, and uh, uh, uses, uh, I think I spelled it correctly here in the chat. Um, yeah, so that's a so that's a, a small uh, specification that combines Provo, but also P plan. So P plan is some is a is is a using Provo to also describe steps in a in in, in a plan that can be executed, so that uh, so that then you can also uh, uh, be yeah uh, see see your yeah see your uh, final LDAS as a result from executing a certain uh, certain plan with multiple, possibly uh, uh, multiple steps uh, 
uh, in them uh, uh, there. So, uh, so there has been a paper written about uh, uh, about the semantically describing stream specification uh, already. It's, a, I would say, it's a, it's a, it's an early proposal. I think there is also a lot of uh, complementary work that that's being done. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, the the thing from the RSPQOL community, uh, the, the streaming linked data uh, community that that uh, introduces things like uh, voice, uh, which is a different uh, uh, vocabulary to really talk about uh, web sockets kind of streams, like uh, like really keeping the last, uh, last last items in sync. And they also introduced a couple of uh, extra metadata uh, things on there. So we will also be uh, slowly looking at uh, convergence with, uh, with, with that community in order to really get Provo and P-Plan and all these things aligned with, uh, with LDES. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Matthias, is that an answer to your question? Yes. Um, thanks. I, I will look into this. Um, have another one. Uh, Atlas seems to be kind of a more advanced version of the syndication, RSS and Atom, for instance. Um, there are various ver variants of those standards. Could you also say something about, I mean, people do ship linked data through other protocols? Uh, like OAI PMH as well as Atom and even though it is XML and sometimes wrapped RDF XML inside of it and so on. Uh, is there any like historical perspectives on this? Um, historical perspectives? Huh, um... I think uh, you 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 make the the perfect parallels. I think we know about these 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 specs, of course. Uh, I also know uh, uh, Herbert von Sample, for example, that that has uh, has done a lot of uh, has has done a lot of work in that that part. There's also Resource Sync, for example, that's also uh, uh, very useful in that regards. Um, so that just the, the the syndication and the replication and synchronization in that sense, uh, that's a feature we share. But then it's also the the part the the first the fact that linked data event streams is linked data native like it's 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 a uh, it, it works fully in in, in a linked data uh, setting and you can also load it into a Spark endpoint if you want and fully keep the the, the time context with it it doesn't rely uh, on on HTTP headers for example uh, uh, if I if I need to compare it with something else or like with an uh, it doesn't rely on on an XML envelope uh, uh, or something so that that's one thing. Um, uh, another thing is that we are also allow to immediately have a fragmentation after it. The fragmentations, which which has been a part of previous webinars, where we would make fragmentations and then even over the LDAS data itself, because it's paginated in a way that says this, uh, the the first letter A, you can find it in that uh, fragment, and the, the and uh, if things that start with the letter T can start it, you can uh, you can find it over there. That we actually can have live auto completion over that because there's a, a, a there's a, a good fragmentation uh, on on top of that. So that's the extra ex aspect that is then uh, not shared with that. But as I also said earlier, when I when I said like I certainly want to make sure that uh, that an LDAS client. Uh, uh, just keeps into account like all possible uh, uh, event streaming uh, frameworks in that sense, and that an LDAS wouldn't be more special than, for example, a resource sync. That's also certainly an ambition that 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 we have. That an LDAS client can also uh, uh, um, can can also take into account existing uh, uh, syndication uh, uh, protocols in the in, in the long run. Right now, we focus on the on the on the uh, on the, on the uh, yeah just doing the, 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 the LDAS native uh, uh, way, but I certainly uh, think we should uh, take into account uh, the, 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 the other ways of doing it. If it's, uh, if it's of course compatible, that will take some time to figure out. Thank you. All right, very interesting questions. Thanks for that, Matthias. Um, I saw Mantas that you also wrote a question in chat. Um, may I ask you to repeat your question out loud here in the webinar? Okay, hi. Uh, so the question was, uh, if, it, if, if it's possible with the event stream and the LDS to publish uh, versions of, of objects, not uh, full versions of an object, but partial versions like patches. For example, if an object contains 100 attributes and only single attribute has changed, 
So, so instead of publishing copy of all 100 attributes, is it possible to only just publish the one that changes? Yeah. Um, the only condition that we at this moment have in an LDAS is the fact that uh, your, uh, your members must be immutable. So if you just use your own vocabulary to say this property of that object changed and your entire LDAS is just a change set in that, in, in, in that sense, then yes, this can already be supported. It would, or, would of course be great if we have also in LDAS not only a standard for the version-based uh, way of, of looking at, at your immutable events, but that we also have like a transactional profile or something on top of, uh, uh, on top of the, 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 the LDAS. And uh, this is something we identified as something that we should standardize and it will also come back in the work items. So, so basically, uh, it is possible, but uh, basically, you are on your own. Uh, basically, you can choose whatever standard that uh, describes patches. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, as long as uh, as it's RDF native, yes, and as long as, of course, the member you describe then is uh, immutable, yeah, so that you don't that you cannot change uh, a patch anymore later on. So that you will just if you need if you want to change a patch, you will have to also again put a new version of that patch in in the stream some something like that yeah but as i understand basically currently clients would not understand the, this kind of uh, event stream uh, correct patch. yeah but you can of course write your own code after the client to then uh, to then uh, uh, process that and indeed uh, it, it is now it is going to be a work item to also standardize uh, that so that it becomes part of the of the client, so that uh, the client does not only uh, understand version objects, but that it also understands uh, patches, which is at this moment uh, uh, not the case. Uh, uh, we are looking, for example, at activity streams to uh, uh, to, to 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 realize that. Okay, thanks. To complement on this, uh, Mantas, is that you see here tree shape. Uh, standard is actually this is what you uh, your members must adhere to. That's the way to communicate uh, in generic way. What is the immutable uh, description of your members? Uh, so this shape is actually the the rules that you use. And so if 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 that's the the contract that you actually create uh, on on the member structure. Yeah, but. Also, it's optional. So at this moment, you can also leave out the shape and say like there can be anything in my uh, in my uh, uh, LDAS, but it will be immutable. And you can also leave out the version of path, and you can even leave out the timestamp path if, for example, your LDAS wouldn't follow any time. I have no use cases for that, but it's possible. <laughs> All right, thank okay, you uh, for the very interesting question and, and, the, re and the response, Peter and Berg. Um, just opening the floor here, are there any others in the call with questions related to the theoretical part? Yes, Matthias, please take the floor. So in your presentation, you had the example of a street name and it changed, uh, but it also changed the event in the event stream, the URI of the thing. I'm assuming now, I, I'm not sure if I understand it correct, if this is kind of a record level in the event stream that you have like a record of something that is changing and then it's only the record or the tree node that is changing the URI, or is it actually the thing that is being described that has to change its URI? Uh, you don't have to change the URI, you have to uh, add another uh, item around it, I would guess, that that, uh, that, uh, uh, that presents the, the, the immutable thing. Because if you put something, uh, indeed, as you say, the record, uh, so, so you could describe immediately records, although that's also uh, uh, like you could... If you describe a record, then you would probably say that the identifier of that record is unique to that uh, to that event stream in the sense that uh, that you will not use that record identifier anymore in an, in an other uh, linked data event stream. However, over here, it's still possible that street name version one, for example, that you would still use that uh, in an other linked data event stream as well. So it's not precisely the record. Uh, uh, so so that's uh, something something to to uh, 
yeah, it's detail, detail, but it's something, something pretty important if you're processing uh, uh, linked data event streams in, a, in, a, in, in your architecture. Um, uh, uh, however, over here, you will indeed have to create new identifiers. So it's not replacing, it is creating new identifiers for uh, the, 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 the thing in its time context. But that is deeply problematic, I would say. I mean, one of the principles in linked data is that you should have one identifier as long as possible for the thing, yeah. like a data set. Or, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're correct. You're correct. But what happens here, and this is the challenge, what I a bit of introduced in the beginning, is that you have to think over the identifiers and their life cycle and what you want to show. And so if you think of the history of the streets, names, and you assume, and this is why I put up this slide, is uh, that uh, street name only has one label. That's the assumption. Uh, so we assume that this, and that you cannot have two labels. So this is something incorrect. So what is shown here is a situation that if you just add information to street name one, then you actually, the old name cannot be present anymore. It should be a replacement. And so normally in linked data, in the latest version, in the, the thing, you just would replace it. But you then don't have any more notion of the old, the historic context. And that is what has happened uh, in the next, in the sense of if you think over the history, then you have to denote the version objects uh, with a unique identifier in that history so that it becomes immutable so that you can relate to them. And then this is what, why Peter introduced uh, street name one V1 and street name one V2. This is a situation at some point in time of street name one. With, uh, I, I fully understand, but the, the, there is another way of doing it. And I, I, want, I want to understand if, I mean, you have name graphs and you can talk, give the name graphs to your eyes and you can talk about the name graphs and give them a timestamp and say, this is the, the statements that you have around the thing at a specific point in time. That yeah. means that the linked data stream would be, um, what is it called? A trig document or something yeah, uh, yeah. instead, yeah. where you could keep the original identifier on the object that is being updated. Yeah. I will I will re reply to that because um, uh, yeah the the problem a little bit with named graphs is that there the semantics of triples being in a named graph is not defined it's it's, it's uh, uh, by spec it is kept open and that's led us to 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 say like okay we can actually not use named graphs for trying to get interoperability across different uh, different organizations because you wouldn't be able to trust uh, uh, what exactly the the the, the named graph aspect of uh, of of its uh, of of that uh, means we also want to make it explicit we also want to make in base uh, uh, in, in using just triples in rdf 1.0 if you want we want to make it explicit what we are pointing at and if we point at street name version one that's also a very important context because maybe i do want to precisely uh, indicate it's the street name version one i want to talk about as then it had that name and then something uh, that, then that's something that, that, I, that I really really want to talk about. So for me, it's really important that we actually do have uh, these these uh, these version identifiers as well in base registries. But uh, wait, <clears throat> wait, you do want to talk about things over time as well. You want to talk about a specific person. Yes, specific but, that, but, that, a specific, and yeah, but that URI is still there. Yeah? So the, with the S version of street name one, that's still there. And if you make in your view a version materialization of it, you will only see street name one and you will not anymore see it in uh, in its time context. Mm, okay. Yes, this works if you have on the top level, but what happens if you have relations to other things? like you have a relation to a publisher do you point to the uri of the publisher independent of the version or to the version specific one yeah good question um so uh if it's just uh, an external reference 
you can just use the uh, the the, uh, the the general URI and not not the, the time specific uh, uh, URI, but then you cannot do any more statements in the current uh, in the current document about that thing. From the moment you want to do more statements about that thing, you will need to use the uh, a version identifier for that thing and also indicate that that thing is a version of uh, uh, something else. So indeed, if you want to have deeper relations, you will also have to use, uh, or like if you don't want to just have a one-dimensional uh, member, uh, by which I mean uh, directly a star shape, uh, so, so immediately uh, uh, properties on top of uh, uh, the, the member, but also want to go deeper, which is, for example, a lot uh, the case with if you also want to add uh, uh, a uh, uh, some geospatial coordinates on top of it, for example, you would create a, a deeper nested object uh, uh, there. Then you also need to use version identifiers for that thing indeed. Okay. This is, I would say, very problematic issues that you are raising now because there is a lot of semantics that you have to build into this system. Like it's allowed, do, do you allow the street name 1-V1 and V2 to be same as, or are, how are they related? Version of, the version of is a very loosely defined property. So the rules you would allow you to actually replace, take a graph and replace the V2 with a V1 in a certain time. Con okay, so maybe that is what you're doing here, but uh, I'm a little bit worried uh, that this creates a lot of complexity down the road, especially when it comes to queries, uh, when you don't know which version, I mean, if you have a connection to a V2 publisher and uh, to know that this is the same as the V1 publisher, uh, it, it gives you a whole inference mess additionally uh, uh, yes. when you're querying yeah. the data. I, I understand that, but here it comes, it is always the challenge at the user of uh, the data. If you, uh, and this is uh, the, the point, what I want to make is, is that if I'm using and pointing to the, uh, the street name one, uh, this is the common case that you want to do, mm -hmm. uh, then you must be aware as a user of street name one, that this can evolve. Uh, if you think that this is static, uh, if you say addresses are static for me, uh, then you make a false assumption, uh, and then you 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 have in in after one month already old data of addresses that do not exist anymore. But oh. the problem, yeah, I, I know is, what you're talking about. But this is just one aspect. You are talking about the world open world assumption, and open world assumption is not just spatial in some sense; it's also temporal. We already have the open world assumption, and we already uh, know that we have to live with this, that there is multiple ways of talking about one thing. And why would we specially use the linked data event streams just to fixate this from the perspective of the temporal aspect and say that we need, in this case, we are allowed to provide new identifiers for the, these things. But you're always... You can always create, but it's it's also not exactly the same thing. So indeed, to your earlier question, all same as I would not allow it. It's uh, it's not all same as it is uh, it is only all same as on the condition that uh, it, from the perspective of a certain view of a certain application that wants to say I'm particularly interested in that. And sometimes the cl the clients that 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 consume a certain data set don't even want to make that that decision, but just want to use some intermediary that published uh, that published a version materialization of it, and that the the client will trust that data to always stay in sync. So uh, um, so I think this allows everything this allows to design everything that happens before the API actually gets uh, created according to the linked data principles by exactly pointing uh, at the, the, the things with the right semantics. Yeah, I'm, I, I still, I'm still confused. I'm sorry, maybe this goes too far. Maybe we need to let someone else, else into the okay. discussion. Um, I'm uh, I'm available after the webinar uh, if you want, uh, uh, Matthias, yeah. to, to to further brainstorm about this because I yeah, think that would your be comments. Nice. Yeah, I think your comments are very sensible, yeah. and uh, I believe that uh, that uh, uh, with further brainstorming that we maybe both can get new insights. Yeah. I would really like to talk about the referencing and the identity of resources, and 
what that means in this context. Okay. Yeah. Um, Julian, did, I saw that you raised your hands. Do you still want to react or? Yes, I, I had a, a small comment about the discussion, but if you are moving on, then uh, I can uh, I can skip it. Or if you think I can have a one minute, I can say it still. Sure, uh, we can use one minute, and then afterwards we will have the break. So. Yeah. Okay. I, I just I just wanted to uh, reflect on 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 Matthias' uh, uh, comment that when he said that it becomes problematic or, or it could become problematic uh, from the querying perspective because then you have all these to reconcile all the all these uh, version URIs and then it becomes uh, difficult to to understand what is what when and so forth. Um, but I, I would I would argue that um, the typical case that we follow when we when we publish and all this is that. Uh, is to facilitate replication and synchronization. So therefore, from for the, from the perspective of, of a reuser, the querying part, what happens is that when you materialize a certain version or a certain snapshot, you could call it, of, of a, an event stream, which can be labeled by version, or you can even constrain it in a certain time window. You can say, I want to materialize the state of that data set from this point in time until this point in time. So every in the end, every entity URI gets uh, for the for, for the user it doesn't appear as, as a version URI you will get a, everything again like all the streets that were defined or, or they were existing or were uh yeah announced at that point in time and and from that perspective you're querying it, it just becomes as querying as a, a, any other knowledge graph so um but of course one thing that you get on top of with the Aldes is that uh, you can actually query directly the elders. You have these version entities, you have this, because the elders on its own is still a, a, a knowledge graph, an RDF knowledge graph, which contains the temporal definition of, of or not the temporal, but a version definition of entities. And you can actually directly query that, which is normally something that you could you, you don't do unless, or you cannot do unless you, you have a data model that is able to represent that kind of semantics. And, and normally what we do is to apply all this on top of data source or data models that don't natively or not necessarily uh, are able to represent that the temporal context or aspects uh, in their in their own entities. Thanks, I, I I got the point. Yes, it's a good point. Um, it still has some conflict with the other values, but it it yes, I understand. Okay, thank you um, for complimenting Julian. Um, um, I will ask Bert to move to the uh, break slide. Um, I think it was already quite a, a heavy introduction. Um, so um, we will give you a break um, and we will see each other back at 10.30, not 11.30, uh, but just uh, six minutes. Um, and then we will start again. So enjoy the break. See each other back soon.
Julian, are you sharing uh, slides now? No, but I, I was going to ask you, perhaps I can already start sharing. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Is it visible? Yes, but it's not in presenter mode yet. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Now it is. Perfect. Best of luck. Thanks. All right, it's 10.30. Um, I hope you had time to grab um, the necessary coffee. Um, may I kindly ask you to raise your virtual hand if you're back so that we are aware that everyone is back in the call. Um, I see a lot of you are raising the hand, so that's perfect. Um, and then I'm really happy to, to give the floor to our colleague, Julian. Um, Julian is a, a colleague, an IMIC colleague uh, working on linked data event streams and he will translate the theoretical uh, introduction of Peter Amberg to practical use cases to showcase to all of you what actually can be achieved and what the added value and business value of linked data event streams is in real life applications. So please Julian, floor is yours. Thank you Arne. So, um, yes, so my, my, my goal here and in this small talk, it would be to try to give you a, a couple of examples of how we, how uh, link data event streams or the idea of link data event streams could be applied in, in, in practical scenarios. And for that, uh, we have uh, worked a, a bit into pilot use cases, which we have made some developments, the, working on top of the Aldis idea for, for for where the main goal is, of course, uh, achieve interoperable data exchange, basically. And here we talk about in interoperable data exchange, uh, mainly in 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 the in the context of the EU. So across making as possible to 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 create interoperability across member states for different domains. And 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 we want to we, we focus on two very I mean fundamentally different uh, use cases domains and. Because we want to showcase that okay, Eldis is also a technology or or or, or, or a conceptual um, definition that doesn't really is not really tied to any particular domain, uh, and it could be it could be is agnostic to that aspect. So, in in, in concrete, we, we work in 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 a, in a pilot use case that uh, tackles uh, or the aims to create, a, for example, a, a decentralized application for doing public transit route planning and, and across across the EU members. So uh, this is a very, I guess, relatable use case for, for most of us who have ever used uh, public transit. But we also shifted towards another, a little bit more uh, sensitive case uh, in, in, this, in, the, in, the, in the sense of data privacy, for example, where we would, we would like to allow interoperability or data exchange, but in a privacy aware manner, in a secure way, of uh, citizen data. So as, as member states, they, they keep, keep registry of their citizens, uh, but uh, and they probably and they most likely have base registries built around around this, this very important data, demographic data, basically. And how can we uh, provide a scenario or, 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 or platform where all this can, can help them exchange data, uh, but in a controlled way. So 
let's let's see a little bit more about these two cases. So for the first case, let's start with the multimodal travel planning use case in the transport domain. So we start with with the motivation, of course, uh, coming from the EU itself, of the regulation of the EU, where we we had that in 2017, of course, the the the, the, the Commission realized of the importance of of creating this interoperability, and and and, and they legislate about that. Uh, prompting every member every member state to take the, the, the first steps to, towards enabling this interoperability and, and for that they recognize what what is the the importance of, of this of having interoperability in this domain to to easily facilitate transportation uh, and logistics of course exchange of data to raise better better services to raise to to, to foment uh, economic development and so forth. And for that, they focus. Uh, the, one of the first steps is, of course, agreeing on a certain standard set of standards, data standards. And, and for that, in Europe, we have uh, Natex and Siri, which is our two part, two specific domain uh, standards for transport, for public transport, not necessarily public transport only, but mainly focus on, on, on public transport. But these are not uh, uh, linked data standards on their own. These are just simply uh, data standards. But OK. We can, I think, we can all agree that having a standard is the first step towards uh, for, towards interoperability. And according to this regulation, each member state shall uh, must uh, set up a, what they call a national access point of where uh, where uh, developers, where applications, where where entities, organizations can go and they, to have one place for every member state where they know that they can find specific data uh, about transport. So for the national access points, we have that. Um, the, member, the different member states are progressively uh, adopting and complying to the spec. We, we see this image from this map that you can find here that was created in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, or 2021. And we see that some countries are already uh, were already uh, complied with it. And some others had already national, uh, national access points, but not all the type of data that was mandated was still there. And yes, uh, and and. There is uh, also uh, some resources from the EU officially where you can you can see what what's the current state of for for every member state. But we see that whether it, a national access point is certainly a, a good step in the right direction, but it's certainly not the last because interoperability. When you have the the national access points, it it becomes to or it starts to suffer of what I I started to call here in this slide the data portal syndrome, where you just that the real inter interoperability work, which is discovering a data set and then integrating it into a certain system or, or application, it remains eminently manual. So it's still the, the job of the developer or the organization to go find the right piece of data and then uh, centralizing it to their own system and then start uh, to reusing it. And that takes a lot of work. And that this is when you when you see the statistics about how how much effort it takes to integrate data. The, the, the cleaning, the discovery and the integration takes much more or, or a big chunk of, of the effort, more than the actual business use case of what you want to do with the data. So we're still not there into automating that part. And of course, that, that's also led that, that additional efforts are still being under underway. And for, for example, I, I want to point to the NAPCOR. It's a community, it's a connecting European facilities project, a European one. Where they are trying to align even further and, and to uh, manage and coordinate all these national access points in the European uh, in, sorry, uh, in, yeah, domain. So, uh, what do we want to show in, in this? What would be the target of this pilot? Is like we want to, to, to tackle on this use case. So, there is a traveler that needs to go from to, to take a trip through several countries. So. But typically what happens is or, or uh, what uh, if you want to really go to the source and trust the data uh, you can you would need probably for every country to to use the app of, of every operator you have to use uh, or I mean you can rely on Google Maps of course there are there are applications that have already taken the organization that have already taken the effort on centralizing or taking all the data themselves and they actually do a very good job but it's 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 that organization who you who you're trusting and you're not really getting or not sure you cannot be sure if you are really getting the actual data of of the real of the of the 
or, or the up to date, for example, data from from, from a, a particular operator. But what do we need to do that? So we would like to have just one, one integrated way to or flow so that it's transparent to the user uh, that you are reusing the official data of, of every member state. And for that, of course, we need to work towards uh, automating the data exchange. We have, we need, we have a need for harmonizing data models. And of course, it's also very important to have scalable uh, interfaces for data access. And this becomes very really important when you when you start increasing your, your users and of course, when you have a lot of data as well. So what, what we, do we propose uh, to have here? Huh. For some reason, I'm not seeing the image here, Arnit, I don't know. Maybe if I, yeah, if I do this, it, it, it just shows. Um, so yeah, so the, the, the basic setup or environment that, that we propose for this pilot is you have a public transit operator, which its own data could be viewed as, as also as a base registry, even though it's not in some cases is the operators are, are private organizations in, in the countries, but they are mandated by law, of course, to make that data available as well. So it's, it's a base, it could be considered as a base registry. And we propose that the data to be published at, as, as an event stream. The public transit uh, time schedules is is a very, it's a data that has a geospatial dimensions. It has it has temporal dimensions, of course, and we can leverage those facts to to create particular types of views so that an application can just uh, go uh, and and take uh, reuse such views and keep on keep in sync with that data, keep on consuming that data to answer questions like where are the which are the stops of or, or the stations that are available or that exist in a certain country, and when is the next train departing? things uh, like this. Um, what type of data model we, did, we, we, did we reuse in the pilot? I mentioned before um, Natex and Ziri as, 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 a, as a European standards, but as I, as I said, this, these data models are not really semantic data models. They are not linked data on their own. And for that reason, we reused a, a data model that is semantic and that covers the needs for, for public transit. It's called Link Connections and it has, it has a website and it reuses basically, it makes a semantic version pretty much of, of GTFS, which is the de facto standard of the domain and describes what, what we call connections, which a connection is basically saying that a, a vehicle departs in a certain stop, arrives to another stop, and that happens at a certain point in time. It can have real-time information about delays and so forth and, and, and other type of data. So not to give much more details about that, but this is the semantic data model we we apply to, to our published elders. And in the end, what we like to have is a decentralized setup where, where we every or every country or every actually every operator, because you can have more, more than one operator per country, will will have a data, a linked data event stream, and then we can actually build an application that doesn't have the need to first bring all the data together in, in their own database, align it, uh, make sure that it's consistent, um, but instead that every every operator is publishing their elders, of course, with the, with also a specific data projection or, or, or views that are required for the use case, and, and, and that can be consumed on the fly and, and to answer particular questions. We, it's also important that to, to remark that the discoverability part, uh, it's, it's really important. As we saw before, we see uh, that the CAT AP catalogs, of course, and elders can, can, are, are, are part of the, of the same big picture. And, and we can um, use, reuse the CAT in, uh, as, as a catalog for, for aiding the discoverability. And we can say, okay, we have all these elders available in, in this location. So applications can just rely on that to, to further uh, execute their, 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 their own uh, business cases. And if we go back to, to the big picture, so what we, what we have on, on, on what would be an elders ecosystem. So we have all the data owners having their, or, or in this case, all the, all the transit operators with their own elders where we have the, you, you can have a data publisher it could be themselves or could be a third parties doing that for them and also other parties creating views on top of that data and you could have additional data service providers in this case we are not using any any particular data service where we rematerialize 
a, a, a particular algas into a specific data interface. We are just uh, querying directly these views. And of course, the application providers who can reuse this ecosystem and, and find uh, to develop different cases. So for the pilot, I think I can go back to the full, well, I will have to go back out of, of it in any case. But um, for the pilot, uh, we just consider very, very shortly or very, uh, very quickly two particular countries, bordering countries, of course, to make to try to, to showcase how we can uh, reuse data from, from different providers of so France and Belgium in this case. Uh, SNCF and NMBS, they are the, the train operators in each country. And the idea would be to uh, showcase an example of that, but making sure that it's a decentralized and we are not centralizing the data um, beforehand. So I will load up the demo quickly. And the demo is online, it's published in GitHub. So as you can see, uh, uh, published as a, as a GitHub page, gives already the notion it's a simple client site or web application that doesn't have anything complex on its own. It's a simple visualization of a map. And in this case, we have loaded up, uh, or we, we are pointing the, the application towards where it can find the data about the stations uh, uh, of Belgium and, and, and some of the stations of France. I have to disclaim here that there is not complete because the amount of, of stations uh, are huge and, and ideally you would have a more a smarter way to, to ask to discover the stations. Um, but in this case, for simplicity, we just did it like that. And so here the, the, the idea is that, okay, you can uh, calculate the route. If I select, for example, Hent and I want to go, let's say where I live in Leuven. So voila, uh, very quickly it finds a route. So it takes, it tells me, that takes right now it takes it takes the time for now so it takes the next train departing Leuven uh, against St. Peter's to Leuven it's at 10 55 and this trip will take me 61 minutes so that's a very simple sample I can do more things like go from Ostend uh, to I don't know Hustle which is a longer one it will take a little bit longer there but it in the end in this case I have to make a change so in the end, it's doing it. So, so far, so good. Nothing spectacular. So calculating routes in Belgium, anybody can do that. Now for France, let's say both to, uh, I don't know, let's go to Lille, Flanders. Now I have calculating, I'm calculating routes in, in France. In this case, I have to make a change as well. But the interesting thing comes when, when I start making uh, routes uh, to uh, Belgium as well. So let's go to Dendermonde instead. And now th there we have it. So now we, we see that, uh, yeah, it, it even can tell you that you have to make a, a walking change at some point. And, and so, yeah, you could, you could say, yeah, you could be actually doing the data uh, in the back all together and, and I'm making sure that, that that's the case. So to just demonstrate, let's see how the data looks if I now go from box to offstand there. So in this case, it, it found its root and we can see that the first part of the root, uh, let me maybe zoom in a little bit here. So you can see the data in the first part of the root, this, this first leg of the trip, it was using data from transport.data.gov.fr. So this is French data from the French operator. But if I go to the last part of the trip in Belgium, now we see that we are actually using irail.be uh, data and, and stations from Belgium. Uh, you see a court track here, for example. And all that it was needed for, for making or, or creating this, this, uh, this scenario, it was to reuse a, a common data model. So in this case, the link connection semantic model and to make sure that we ha I had um, uh, sorry, uh, unique identifiers for, for the stops, for the connections, and so forth. Um, in this case, the, where, where does the ALDES stand in, in, in this case? The ALDES stand as, as a way that uh, to, to keep on publishing the data and to keep on updating these views, we are actually uh, enabling the, this kind of querying on top of the data. The views in the end is a temporal view, which it's defined by link connections. So the link connections says, okay, you, you, it, it poses the semantic data model, but it also 
tells you you should organize or, or sort your data in a temporal fashion, uh, which the eldest already kind of provides. <clears throat> but then the eldest, you can also combine as well real time uh, obs uh, observations of delays, which is really interesting. And, and all I needed to do was to have a couple of eldest's uh, running and, and then with their own views and then have an application to query that directly. And I didn't have to, to set up any kind of backend for my application. Of course, that will not be the case every every time. You can, normally, you would need your backend to keep your own data, but since in this pilot, it was enough to demonstrate the, the case. If if there are if there are questions out here, or, or shall I continue, Arne? What do you think? Shall I take um, questions for this one? Yeah, let's take questions regarding this first um, okay cool use case. Um, I see there's a question in chat, Jakob. Um, perhaps could you repeat it? Um, Uh, sure, my question, hello, <laughs> my question was uh, whether this app is actually reading the event streams directly or whether uh, it is actually the views that uh, kind of centralize the data from the event streams and uh, are used by the application. So uh, it, it's not reading the event stream directly because as, as I mentioned here, so what we would create is a view, a, a temporal view for it, and that temporal view, it's it's actually a kind of stream of, of 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 the. It's a projection of that event stream, but that mat, that materializes uh, every everything. So we don't have a version of a connection. We have a connection in that temporal view, uh, and but it's it's actually published in the same way as an elder. So I, to sh to give you an example, let's calculate another route. For example, again, uh, from here to here. And we can see these these queries happening here. So these connections. Uh, actually, this one maybe. So th this uh, this this request happening here. This is the temporal view that is created from the from the um, from the event stream. So when I query this, I get uh, this is linked data, all of it. Of course, it's JSON LD, but. Um, this is created from the event stream and is materialized continuously from the event stream in the backend. And important to notice, uh, it's not a centralization. Uh, every view can be created again by any uh, any party who wants, and there uh, there is data from different servers that are, that is being queried on uh, in this prototype. Indeed. So so it, the first one I showed is is on this domain graph graph which is a real uh, link connection uh, or uh, publishing from 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 Belgium, and we created the French one in, in our server. So you can here see uh, where I had it here. Uh, here, here is the other one for SNCF. We created that uh, in our server, but of course, as you can see, it's a different server where the data is coming from, and 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 the identifiers are different. The the that uh, are, are created based on the trans the the, the, date, the original data source. Okay, and uh, so, so I get it that there is basically a French view and a Belgian view, and those are queried by the app, right? Yes. Yeah, and um, uh, then the views are technically what? Is this a kind of a Sparkle endpoint, or is it some proprietary API being queried? Uh, the view uh, it's defined as, as a as a hypermedia API. So if 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 we go to linkconnections.org, which is where, where it's defined. What it does, it says, the only thing that it says is like, every, you have a data set of, of connections, just order it in time, uh, per departure time, uh, and, and make pages out of it. Because of course you cannot fit all the, all the connections in one page, so just paginate it and then the, uh, and make uh, links across those pages, which is, if you think about it, it's pretty much how an LDIS is also structured but then all this is more generic. In this case, it's very particular for the transport case. And and, and then you the application, what it does is to follow these links and to and to because it relies on the fact that the things are ordered, the connections are ordered, so it can find routes in that way. And it's the app who's executing the algorithm. But the server is just the view is simply just reorganizing and materializing what gets from the elders and, and, and to project it into, into a different uh, yeah, it's an API basically. Okay, thank we, also, 
Yeah, we also have the idea that, or uh, in my presentation, I said that we can uh, uh, replicate the link, link data event stream in multiple views being it can be a Sparkle endpoint, it can be an elastic search for auto completion. Uh, so in really services, that's our LDAS to service uh, scenario. But we can also work on republishings in uh, materializable interfaces. I really like the word materializable interface, or it's something I try to to, to, to work on or I see as the focus of my work in which we just create a fragmentation, a refragmentation of the, uh, of the event stream so that we, so that it is something like an index on top of your data. And in the same thing, you can, you, you would also be able to see this as a particular index that is beneficial for public transit route planning in this case. Thanks for the question and, and the responses. Um, Mantas, I see that you raised your hand as well, but given the stake of time, may I kindly ask you to write down your, your question in chat um, and then ask you, Julian, kindly to answer it after your second demo. Um, yeah. And then uh, we should move forward. All right, so to uh, move forward to the second um pilot that we went so it was about professional not professional uh, about citizen migration actually in general but again the motivation comes from 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 eu regulation with but in this particular domain the the, the regulation is much more advanced uh, because the, they re recognize the importance of having uh, exchange data about demographics in general uh, which migration is part of uh, and but in this case they have the very strong requirement that it needs to guarantee the protection of per personal data so th this is uh, this is important in this case and and unlike the the public the transport domain uh, in in demographics we have the eurostat which stands as like a, as, a, as a european authority to to handle that and where countries are mandated to provide data to eurostat which they do not only about demographics, of course, as you can see, they have data about many things, um, but they, they already have a process in, in, in place to provide that data. And Eurostat acts as a hub, as a centralizer that, that gets all the data and that and then publishes a statistics and analysis uh, in, a, in, a, in a secure way, in a privacy aware way. But again, we have just one uh, entity who needs to do all this heavy lifting of, of centralization and then publishing and then querying as well uh, for supporting use cases. So, but right now following that approach, we, this scenario, for instance, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not really uh, possible uh, in, 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 a, in an interoperable way, at least, where, for example, we can think, let me go out of that because not all the images show in, in the presentation mode for some reason. But let, let's just say that, uh, okay, Greece has their own base registry of citizens. Luxembourg has their own base, base registry of citizens. This is protected data. They provide that data to Eurostat. But what if, for example, a Greek officer uh, wants to have information about uh, Greek citizens moving in and out of Luxembourg in the last two years? So right now, uh, there is no direct way and, unless they pick up the phone and, uh, and ask for that data. And then it's a manual process that to, could enable to answer this question. Uh, or, of course, they have to go to Eurostat and, and see if Eurostat has the data for this, which most likely it does, but uh, but it won't be directly from the source. That's the point here. Eurostat acts as an aggregator and, and probably the process that is in place because the countries are not uh, providing the data in a continuous way, is not fully synchronized, uh, they, the, the updates happen in a, in a regular basis, and so you could see probably data that is not up to date that's uh, that's the key but uh, what if we can then create a, an a, a scenario where we have an application like the one that eurostat uh, provides where all these features all the visualizations and the day most importantly data access in a secure way but that could also be used by um by the uh, different op uh, authorized officers to actually directly go to the source and get the data from the source and make sure that it's synchronized, make sure this is available. In this case, again, we have for interoperability and for discoverability, most, uh, more, more, more importantly, DCAT AP as, as, a, as a scenario to, to publish the, the, info, the metadata about those elders, where did they live, and then we can discover them and, and, and query them. But note here that, of course, now we have to keep in mind the access control policies. 
And for that, we in this pilot, we base ourselves on the web access control specification. It's an open web access, web uh, W3C a recommendation that is currently been not recommendation, sorry, it's a draft recommendation um, that is currently being developed under the SOLID uh, initiative, so the team led by Tim Berners-Lee. But uh, the, in this pilot, we, elders can work with that, but not it's not uh, limited to it. I mean, we can think of other ways of handling access control because their uh, web, web access control enable some things, but more complex scenarios are, are, I understand that they are not possible, but we can think of other models like ODRL and, and this kind of, of ontologies that are actually recommendations and that are now being taken up in, in data spaces scenarios, for instance. So, but in this pilot, we, we just, for simplicity, we, we, we base ourselves on web access control and we can define in every LDES uh, with, with our policies like I'm, I'm, I'm the Luxembourg-based registry, and I authorize as particular uh, Greek officers to access data only about Greek citizens. I mean, I, I, as, as Luxembourg, I don't, I wouldn't like to give information to Greece about my own country nationals, or for that matter, to other country nationals that are not Greek. I can provide you information about Greeks. Uh, if, uh, to Greece, um, but I sh I, and also have to respect the privacy. I cannot simply give names and addresses. I can give you some sort of uh, anonymized data. What are uh, in this case the data model? The data model in this case we are, we were able to to reuse a uh, the U core person vocabulary, which is led by the Semic Initiative as well. Uh, and in this case, there is a semantic model in place that uh, it's uh, that can harmonize this, this aspect unlike the, the the transport domain. And what would be the logical flow of, of this pilot? Uh, it, it's simply um, having, for example, I'm a Greek officer, then I go to the app and I, I request access again to for Greek citizens living in Luxembourg. The app would go to the catalog and, and discover where, where if the, whether there is a, a Luxembourg, a, a, a eldest or yeah, data source from Luxembourg will get that, it will query for the data, the, the the eldest on that side will verify the access control policies for that particular Greek officer, and if it's allowed, it will return the data uh, back to only for Greek citizens. Uh, and of course, the application will just display that. So it's a very simple flow. And to demonstrate it, it's also a, an application that, that is online. So let me quickly showcase that. It's a very simple application. So. Uh, just a disclaimer, there is not anything spectacular as the Eurostat one. So in this case, I just came here to log in place and I will I would like to log in as a Greek uh, officer. So I have a web ID for 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 a Greek officer. In this case, the the the, lo the identity provider we are using is a, is a community solid server that is public. Uh, but of course, this is not necessarily the case or is not tied to that. You can also reuse any other identity providers that we simply are not uh, considering in this uh, in this pilot. So in this case, I just need to log in, provide my credentials. And once I'm logging, simply uh, now it says, OK, I'm, I'm a Greek officer. Please select a country. So I have three different uh, sources for, for this case. And if I want to see I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's do the example of Luxembourg, and I can say I can take uh, in this case advantage of the temporal aspect of the eldest and say, let, give me all the people that in Luxembourg that have uh, moved in or moved out from the third to the eighth of uh, April. There's nobody apparently, but if I go later on until the twenty-first, huh, in that case, I have seen three entries. Of course, keep in mind that this is just dummy data because we are not really um, entitled to use real data. Uh, and in this case, what I could see is that there is simply a Greek national that lives in Luxembourg and re registered on this date. And there was there was also a Greek national that lives in Merge and deregistered in this date. This is the only thing I can see. But if I now tell it I want, I'm a Greek officer, so I'm entitled to see Greek data. In this case, I can see everything because of course, the Greek, uh, the Greek uh, uh, officer have access for, for all of that in the case of Greece. Uh, for the case of France, I can also see something like that. But again, 
uh, people that live in uh, register or the register in Paris and, and when that happened. Uh, I can, of course, give the same example if we go for 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 a, a Luxembourg officer, but I guess uh, I'm a little bit tight on time, so I, I will skip that. Uh, please come to me if you want to play a little bit more with the with the with the demo. I can pr uh, provide you with the credentials how to to, to use it. And uh, yes, so that's it for me. If there is time for questions, otherwise I will check the chat. Um we have time for perhaps one question um okay. if there are any um first of all thanks julian <clears throat> i don't see any hands popping up immediately um so then i would suggest that we move forward um to the next section uh, nevertheless do not hesitate to write down your questions in chat and uh we will tackle them over there. Um, thank you again, Julian, and um, I would be happy to give the floor back to Bert um, for the next section. Okay, let's see, sharing uh, that one. So I'll put it up my, uh, back on the coffee break. Oh, no, yet. Ah, I have to put the here button. Um, okay. Where am I? Up. And is it already shared? Uh, no. Uh, sorry. My apologies for this. Uh, where is it? Where it went? Uh, no. Yeah. Now we see your mailbox, uh, Bert. Oh. Should be this one. Uh, share. Wait, I'm screwing up. <laughs> uh, what is this? We are still seeing your your mailbox bit. Um, I don't know why this. Uh, where is the app? Uh, the app is gone. For me, maybe uh, Arne, you can share it and then. Uh, and I lost my the the app as shared. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, now it should be visible. Um, let me go yeah. into presenter mode. I will have to move forward, but that's no issue. Yeah. Well. Okay. So uh, on my side uh, and, and with Peter, uh, we will discuss short uh, some future work or improvements that uh, uh, we see uh, and then uh, were registered as well in on the GitHub um, uh, on the elder specification and where uh, we think that the community can contribute and start contributing when you start looking at the specification. These are topics uh, that uh, have not a direct answer yet in the specification. So they are quite open areas where um, let's say contributions are really welcomed. And in order to give you so insight into the uh, the topics, um, we would like to present those. Um, uh, so there are five topics that we want to present. Um, so we'll go one by one uh, on it. Uh, okay, next slide. Uh, so the first uh, thing that we want to highlight is is that it's already mentioned in the demo and in the beginning that there is a relationship between uh, DCAP perspective. If you want to share the information of the elders, we want to make it available. We wanted to make it visible in a catalog. And, and then is the question always how we do that. What is the metadata connection between an elders perspective and a DCAT AP? metadata catalog perspective. And so this is the question. And so how we match this terminology. And so if you look to the uh, on the next slide, we have the two key elements that in DCAT play a role when we just try to describe things uh, and that are the data sets and the services. That are the two things in which play a role, of course, in LDES con context. There is this notion of this collection and there's a notion of LDES as a service offering access to data. And so how you match that on data sets and data service. 
And on the next slide, we have the eldest terminology. We have the eldest event stream. And as Peter explained in the beginning, uh, so this is a collection of immutable members uh, and uh, structured according to some agreed structure. Uh, uh, so this matches very well on the data sets notion. Uh, and so that's the reason why Peter mentioned it. This is a subclass. You can see this as a subclass of LDS, uh, of uh, DCAT data set. And at the same time, if you look then to the service side, and the offering of the services, uh, uh, then you have, okay, what what we pick there, and then it's it, it, the data set as it's such is maybe not a service. There are something what's called nodes, uh, and that's connected to views that you have on the uh, on the LDS stream, and that is comes closer to the service that you are going to offer. Of course, and this is a subtlety here in in, in the, the challenge. And that already was in the discussion uh, before uh, the break. We have these uh, URIs that are dereferenceable. And that's the thing that we have to match and to find uh, the case. And so, as you see here on this uh, two layering, there's this bit of for humans and for machines aspect as well, um, where our metadata on DCAT AP is mostly towards human discovery. Uh, so you, as a human, you want to find the information, what is data, a data set available, but you can use that perspective as well for machines. But at that level, you want to do more and you want to be more precise, more specific. And that's what LDIS is. LDIS is much more precise and much more specific and it's suited for machines. So the goal there for an LDIS structure as metadata and the metadata that around it is, is that you can use, as Kurian mentioned in his use case, that you can query a catalog and that you get a response back so that you can say, okay, and now I know I'm guaranteed that this is the endpoint LS uh, um, uh, service I want to use to do the query. Um, so this is the balance and the act that we want to make. And then you can see that the goal of that in the next slides that we try to have to match them and to say, okay, how we can interpret and make a specialization of DCAT so that it's, the two come but closer together. And it works for that. And then you have to, we can lift it up and say, okay, what is then the human perspective, how you relate to the human broader perspective that is into it. Um, so this is still a bit open. Uh, there's nothing written out yet, except of this base uh, correspondence and mappings and so on. And our proposal is that we work towards um, some similar guideline mapping documents uh, as we have um, introduced lately uh, for break DKTP in the previous webinar or the activities that have been done on high value data sets where we are going to say how to use DCAT AP in a particular context. And this context would be in the context of LDES uh, uh, services and, 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 cut and, and, and collections to be shared. How do to do that? So we have a GitHub issue, and, and that is uh, on 27, and then you can be linked to that. Um, and Matthias, quick question. Um, are you talking about for an adult type of source or for individual of a data set? It, it's for the, the goal is more towards LDES, uh, so to use the DCAT AP for a catalog of LDESs, um, yeah, so to see how that matches. Uh, so it's that a catalog of LDESs, how we build that and how we use and we go, come close to um, DCAT AP. So it's not using uh, DCAT AP as an other alternative for the collection uh, uh, of immediable uh, members, etc. That's not the objective. Uh, so it's not to see that. It's, it's to see what are the LDS, the services, the data sets that are present so that we can create this uh, discoverability of the LDS. That is what yeah. we want to do. Yeah. And uh, indeed, in issue 27 that I linked in the chat, uh, you can uh, already find uh, also existing implementations. And like for uh, in Flanders, they already also uh, they also made uh, LDSs already findable uh, through the, the the metadata portal uh, they, they they have, which is uh, DCAT compliant. 
Um, so, so there you can also already see how they did it, but uh, they also had to make some decisions and that's something that we want to standardize in this pack as well. So this is the, the point, and then I give the four the, to the four others uh, the word to Peter. Yeah, um, the, the 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 second uh, work item that that we have are point in time retention policies. So uh, what is already possible uh, with retention policies today is a latest version subset uh, policy, uh, meaning that uh, in a certain uh, view that you have, uh, maybe a derived view, maybe just. Uh, the view you have, you want to clearly say, I don't keep uh, a lot of history. I only keep the last version of, of, of something, or maybe I keep the last five versions uh, of something. So that can be described using a latest version subset. And we also have a duration ago policy, uh, meaning that, uh, uh, that we only keep, uh, um, um, keep uh, certain items for uh, for a certain duration. For example, we keep it for one year. Uh, that's that's the two retention policies that uh, are currently in the spec. However, in issue 33, uh, what we are discussing, and this already has a uh, pull request uh, added to it with the, with the uh, that was proposed by um, by the, the, the Flanders Smart Data Space and the company Sigika, uh, who uh, who proposed that uh, specific point, uh, point in time retention policy. On the next slide, I think I added uh, the, the, the proposal or, or what they, they, they want to do. So over here in this uh, small turtle example, you have uh, a collection for uh, is, an, uh, is an event stream, uh, has a timestamp path on prof generate that time in this case. So not the DC terms created uh, as in the previous examples. It has a tree view of uh, a view one, page one. That page one uh, has a view description on it that says, ah, uh, uh, this view has a retention policy P4. Uh, P4 has a point in time policy now, which is a new uh, new thing um, uh, where the point in time is now defined at uh, a certain timestamp. What will happen now is that um, um, it will uh, uh, it will just start from that timestamp and only from that timestamp it will continue to provide uh, all the data available. This is something that wasn't possible before, but is uh, a pull requested now in the spec. And uh, I would forge to, um, to to just now merge the, the, the pull request as it's, uh, as, it's uh, uh, as I uh, um, uh, gave it a positive review. Uh, however, uh, I will still wait one week to, to actually get it in the spec and await your uh, if there would be still feedback on that, please feel free to comment on issue 33. Then um, uh, we have, uh, ah yeah, so that's the pull request uh, by Seika and Digital Flanders. Yeah. Uh, next slide is uh, uh, is the one uh, on, on the question that I was also earlier uh, uh, asked on, um, on yeah, can, can it also be something different than, than uh, versions? And even if we have versions, how do you precisely need to act? Uh, uh, how does a view need to act uh, precisely? Does it always needs to maybe uh, uh, fully replace uh, the the the, um, uh, the the members uh, every time there's a, there's a new version? But what if you want to use a different kind of profile? What if you don't want to use um, uh, what if you don't want to use uh, version of? But what if you want to use, for example, uh, I patched. Uh, I patched a certain uh, member to now that property to, to change that into this. Uh, well, we will we will also we might want to uh, create a specific profile for CRUD actions, uh, uh, maybe CRDTs, uh, things like that. These are all things that we need to uh, start uh, discussing. So this is a more vague uh, work item at this moment. There is uh, there were, uh, there is an issue open uh, on it. Uh, I see. I I didn't uh, link it precisely. Uh, but uh, there's an issue uh, on it in the in the uh, linked data event streams uh, specification GitHub repository. Um, um... Yeah, well, I will I will, uh, I will check it out later. Um, and then, yeah, the, the the last work item that we will need to uh, talk about, and I mean by talk about uh, the, the the main discussion will happen on uh, GitHub, uh, but uh, the, the the last one that we need to certainly need to do is to uh, further standardize the client iterator. Right now, we really rely on HTTP, uh, meaning that um, uh, the fact that. Uh, uh, the, the the benefit of of paginating uh, an, a linked data event stream chronologically 
based on the timestamp path is the fact that for older pages, you will be able to say all these older pages contain immutable members, which means that the page as such will also be uh, uh, cache immutable. And that you can indicate in the caching headers of HTTP, you can indicate ah, uh, there's a, a cache immutable uh, um, a paradigm here that, that you can set so that uh, uh, an HTTP client just a standard HP client even can just always keep it uh, keep it in cache and will never have to uh, refetch that that page again. So the re replication and synchronization works quite swiftly because you can just uh, uh, only uh, keep uh, or keep polling uh, one document uh, or even use a pub sub protocol to to keep in sync uh, uh, with that. Um, that's um, an, an uh, an interesting way of doing that, but for really, really, really big linked data event streams, you can imagine that then keeping the state uh, of that becomes really, really big. And of course, it's a, a, I think it's an easy suggestion that we could try to just set an iterator, say like I arrived on, uh, uh, I, I paused and uh, I paused on that uh, on that uh state inside the the linked data event stream into in that specific view and now i want to resume from that from that point as well that we can just keep that as, as some kind of uh sequence number maybe a date time but then we also have to make sure that uh that that that's uh, uh cleared out um so uh, so we will need to standardize that client iterator in order to have uh a uh, less uh, memory intensive uh, uh, resuming and uh, or pausing and resuming uh, uh, system there. That's uh, issue 31 that we'll uh, discuss that. And then, as I already said earlier, there's the, the W3C3 community group. There we will uh, uh, specific, we will um, sometimes move certain issues from linked data event streams to the gen more general uh, three hypermedia community group. In that community group, its goals are to further evolve that three hypermedia specification and its vocabulary, which is mainly about all the relations that, that we have there. Uh, we will also create a test suite for for uh, for uh, spec compliance a test suite i should say yeah, for for uh, for uh, spec compliance and then we will also deliver a specification on view definitions for source selection uh which is uh, i think a uh, a pretty difficult uh, one that uh, if you indeed have a derived view that we also use provo uh, uh, in there so that's uh, i i see that as a as a uh, longer running uh, work item uh, where we will uh, include the learnings from the SDS specification that also was uh, already mentioned earlier uh, that uh, that will uh, uh, show that hey this is a derived linked data event stream from that and so on and so uh, forth yeah that's it thanks Peter um Perfectly on time. Um, it's also for my moderator perspective. Thanks for that. Um, are there any questions from the audience here? Seems not to be the case. Um, then we can go to the final part of this webinar, the wrap up and the next steps. And um, since there are no specific questions, um, we can ask one to you. Um, I think Peter has explained it at the final part of our, or in his final slides. We were really trying to build up a community and get a sense of where linked data event streams are used already um, throughout member states in the European Union, or if um, some of you are considering an LDS implementation. Um, therefore, we have um, established a European survey. Um, and I kindly ask one of my colleagues um, to publish this link here in the chat um, in order to grasp where all of you are already involved with linked data event stream or want to be. Um, this is really key for us as a SAMIC action to get an overview of or get a sense or of where linked data event streams um, are used or if, or if someone is considering to use a linked data event stream. Um, so we have foreseen some time here. Um, I would say once the link is in chat, and thanks a lot for that, uh, Bert, um, um, we have three minutes, should be sufficient. It's only two or three questions really briefly, um, and then we will disclose the next steps at 11.25. If 
something doesn't seem to work, do not hesitate to raise your voice or post a question in chat. All right, I hope those few minutes were sufficient for all of you, but if not, yeah, just take the time um, to complete it. It will remain open even after the webinar. Um, and this brings us to the final slide, um, the next steps. Um, and I'm happy to pass the floor back to Anastasia, who introduced us to this webinar to disclose the final steps. Okay, so for the final uh, and for our next steps, we have foreseen the creation of a user, usage overview facilitating collaboration between implementers. And uh, the creation of an LDS fact sheet highlight, highlighting the business value. And also we have, um, we are fostering the collaborative development uh, on the GitHub page. Uh, can you can we move to the next slide, please? Yes. So, thank you very much for uh, joining this uh, webinar. We hope that uh, we have uh, highlighted uh, um, the, how you can use the LDS specification. I suppose there are still um, open questions, but you can reach out to us. You know what are the mediums that you can communicate with us. And uh, we are looking forward to see you in a future webinar. Thank uh, you all. Note, Enjoy. <laughs> yes, also to note here, Arne, that uh, the material from this webinar will be shared uh, as soon as we process the minutes and uh, we'll uh, make available slides and the recording. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend. Thank you very much. Great webinar. Thank you, my friend.